Good morning, friend. Today, I want to talk about how it is time to come alive in the gifts and in the anointing that the Holy Spirit has given to us. It is time to come alive. Don't wait for somebody else in your family member. Don't wait for someone else under your roof to come alive in the spirit and to share it with your household and your family and friends. Maybe God has placed that anointing upon your life today, friend, that you're the one that needs to rise up. You're the one that needs to come out of hiding. You're the one that needs to speak and proclaim what God has done in your life. You're the one that needs to be that spiritual leader. I know the enemy used to put these thoughts into my head that you're a woman and it's the male's job in the household to be the spiritual leader. But if God has placed that anointing upon you and those gifts are within you and he, he has the spirit within you, it's your responsibility. Don't wait for someone else to rise up as that spiritual leader. Do it yourself. God's given that to you. You can be a teacher. You can teach your children. You can teach your household. You can teach your coworkers. You can teach your parents. You can teach those people that God has put in your life. Um, may we never be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So I have some scripture I wanted to share with you today in Matthew 10. This is when Jesus sent the 12 disciples out to go and share his message. Jesus says, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And then a little bit farther, he says, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves, meaning it's not going to be easy. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. Be on your guard. Do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And I'm skipping ahead a little bit more. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So don't be afraid. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. I remember I used to be, I used to feel embarrassed to kind of bow my head at work when I first started before I would eat lunch, even though I really wanted to. Nobody else did. So I, I kind of had that attitude. Well, if nobody else does, I don't really want to be the first one. Maybe if somebody else does, then then I'll join in. But I remember this, this verse convicted me that whoever acknowledges me, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. So I started to just be unashamed. And when I would have my lunch amongst all my coworkers who were sitting there having conversation, I would just bow my head and pray. And I still do that to this very day. And um, there's a, there's a lot of power in that. And I also feel like that's a, an amazing testimony that we're silencing ourselves before the Lord and that we're not ashamed to do that. We're not ashamed to acknowledge that we want to have that quiet time with him and just thank him for the meal that he has provided to us. Uh, I'm reading this book right now, Live in the Spirit by A.W. Tozer, and I think this is so powerful, what he says here about the Holy Spirit and just the divine wisdom and understanding the Spirit gives to us. So a person, a person with the Spirit has a strange, beautiful ability that enables that man or woman to speak with an unusual quality of conviction and everlastingness. It may be a housewife. It may be a man who sweeps the streets, maybe a bishop, maybe an evangelist, maybe a humble pastor in some unknown country parish. Whoever it may be, he has an unusual ability to speak with conviction and inspiration that is not human but divine. The results, while they may not be vast, will be eternal and permanent. Friend, it doesn't matter what your earthly job is today. It doesn't matter if you have the highest paid job or the least paying job or no job at all. It doesn't matter. God, God's spirit, if it is within you, no matter what you do for a living, no matter where you live, 
He, he can work through you and in you, and he desires to do that today. He desires for you to be the one that rises up in your household, for you to be the one to teach your children um, about the good news, and you will see that fruit being, being born um, as I am seeing in my children. It, it is there. It, it will be there. Now, does everyone have the Spirit? Yes, every Christian has the Spirit. Paul says in Romans 8, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Except you be, except you be every Christian has a measure of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, we are told that by one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body. But in the same chapter where Paul explains this, he says, I would not have you ignorant about spiritual gifts, but covet earnestly the best gifts. If the fact that we have a measure of the spirit when we are converted was all Paul wanted us to know, he would have said that and quit. But he explains at great length that the Holy Spirit is the Christian's birthright. It is not only for the great, it is the birthright of the most humble saint. Friend, Satan wants you to feel insignificant today and that your voice doesn't matter, but it does matter. If God's spirit is living and active with you, you have a voice and he wants you to start using it. First Corinthians tells us that people who were Christians in those early days were simple people. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. What shall we say about all this? Shall we freeze up, hide and say, I'm not going to be fanatical? We are stone cold. That is our biggest problem. It is not fanaticism we need to be afraid of. It is spiritual frost. What shall we do then? Bring your empty earthen vessel. God bless you.